I think for Jose Mourinho, it's very interesting. I mean, absolutely no, will he get Man United job? It's 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 just not. I think Mourinho's fallen off in relation to what he was, but I want to quantify that by saying that without question, he's box office, incredible manager, incredible career. But it was very clear from the end at Chelsea, Man United, Spurs, that in the Premier League, his style of football, it gets swallowed up by this high intensity football that um, is, is the new thing at the moment. And I don't think Mourinho can compete with that. I therefore think Celtic, as as you've, as you've said, would be interesting because that's the sort of place he could go and be successful in a league that he wouldn't have a problem with. But I personally think international football is ready-made for Mourinho and that should be the next stage. He's he's won Champions Leagues, he's won Premier Leagues, he's won league titles. And to go and win a, a World Cup or a Euros would be, you know, a completion of his Wikipedia page, to be honest with you. And I think international football because of the nature of it is a lot slower so and that would and it's more tactical we see a lot more boring games in international football i i would not be opposed to taking Mourinho as england manager and people say well look at all the talent we've got but southgate's a very boring coach Mourinho would be an improvement on that so and can you really get an international team to play pep ball or clock ball when they're not training with them all the time so i, I I'm, I'm a big fan of Mourinho being the england coach yeah, I mean, I think the the usual suspects of Henderson and Phillips will be there. I, I don't think they should be. I think that's two or three years ago that they were playing well enough to start for England. But we know that Southgate loves his favourites and he may well go with those. But I've got five options that I think give you different options as well. So, I mean, look, first of all, I don't want this to happen as a Man United fan because I want him to have a summer off. But you could go for something really young and exciting in Kobe Mainu, who with Bellingham and Rice... I think that would make for a really innovative, exciting midfield three for Manchester United. But I'd put that as number five because I think that Kobe Mainu is so young and I'm sure there's Newcastle fans saying, well, you know, what about our young midfielder um, in Miley and stuff like that? So that's your young option. I think number four would be, uh, I'd probably go Conor Gallagher. I really have been impressed with Conor Gallagher this season and I think his energy and in a bad Chelsea side, I thought it was a mistake to take him off in the Carabao Cup final, actually. I think he's been really impressive. He's shown a brilliant box-to-box player. And if Chelsea did sell him, which would be ridiculous, I think there'd be a massive queue for him. And I think alongside Bellingham and Rice, that would, again, be a very energetic, hard-to-get-through midfield, but also with the attacking intent. Um, option three, I think I'd go Trent, which, again, is a bit unorthodox. But um, I think that at right back... He's probably not the right option in an international football. You want to exploit his his attacking tendencies and his set pieces. And I think, again, with people like Rice there, you're going to get a lot more freedom for Trent in in a midfield three. So I think that's an interesting option. And we've seen Southgate do it. Option two, I would probably go James Madison, which means Bellingham's a little bit deeper as the box to box and Declan Rice holding and then give Madison the freedom as the number 10. And then option number one is a bit similar, but probably an upgrade on Madison. I think I'd go Phil Foden. Um, I know it's not always worked for England, but I don't really think Foden's a winger. I think he's been played out of position to accommodate. I think Foden is made for the number 10 position for Man City and England. And, you know, you drop him into a tournament like this and give him the freedom and get that ball into him. This could be the coming of age tournament for him. So there's five different options there. And I'm sure there's probably another five options I've not mentioned, but I've tried to go with five differing options that, um, you know, hopefully people can settle in and go on. I'd go with that one. No, I wouldn't start Marcus Rashford. I think there's a really good uh, debate to be said that Anthony Gordon deserves to go to the Euros ahead of Marcus Rashford um, as an all round player, goals, assists, form, work rate. I think Anthony Gordon isn't probably naturally as talented as Rashford, but what he offers consistently across a number of attributes would be perfect for England and a tournament. However, I think where I'd give Rashford the edge, and I wouldn't start him for England, is that he's just so different to everybody else. And I think if in the last 20, again, in a tournament, you actually want things that are a little bit different. I mean, I remember we took Peter Crouch to tournaments, very different type of striker that if you need to start chucking in a long ball, he offers you that. And I think with Rashford in the last 20 minutes of games against tired legs, he's so quick and direct. He offers something really different. And I think in a in a tournament, you you need two or three players that are just very different to what you've got in case circumstances you know present themselves. So absolutely no, Rashford shouldn't be starting for England. He just doesn't deserve it this season. But I would take him as a as a bench option just to give you that raw, direct pace if you need it at some stage in the tournament.